We're joined today by musician Russ Taff, three-time gospel music hall of famer. We're talking about uh, a lot of stuff today, including his new album, Cover Story. Russ, how you doing today? I'm doing well. Doing well. Excellent. I'm glad we were able to hook up here. Well, I'll, I'll introduce you here to my co-host, Ton. Hey, Russ, how you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great. How about you guys today? We are really good. Uh, I just want to say I'm really excited to have you on the line. I, <laughs> I can't tell you. Uh, it's been a, an amazing journey here, and um, I just recently became a fan of yours, so I'm very excited to have you. Yeah, and, and th- thank you very much. I'm really glad my music has touched you. Yeah, it has big time. So I want to tell you really quick, we, we're we actually in a church right now. We're in my church uh, recording this, but we're not, um, we've never really been like a Christian uh, radio show. And Christianity uh, for me is fairly new in my life, like becoming a, a, a full-on Christian. And, and it's been in part thanks to this church. And it started from... Um, basically non-believer and then all the way to to now i'm um i'm even looking into uh certified lay lay ministry uh, i've been doing um some preaching at uh i've preached at my own church here multiple times covering for the pastor i've preached at a few other different churches around in different towns and it's been okay. quite an amazing journey and um somewhere along okay. the way i i I say all this to give you a little background and, and road into, um, I've, I, we've never been into Christian music at all, ever. And, um, You've never been into Christian music at all? Yeah, I never had been, That's, ever. Wow. Ever. And, uh, okay. Because I didn't grow up in the church or anything, and we've played some here and there, um, but not super into it. And um, my introduction to you was was literally probably... I don't know, maybe six, eight months ago. And really? Yeah. And have you um have have you seen have you seen the Theo Vaughn clip? Are you aware of this thing? No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the guy impersonating me? Yes. They somebody's layered his face <laughs> over you. So that's where I saw <laughs> that's <laughs> Oh, it's great. Yeah, that's it's great. It was amazing. So <laughs> So I saw that clip and I thought this is hilarious. I love Theo Vaughn. I love listening to his podcast. But I knew I know enough about music and about Theo to know that's not Theo's voice. I know something's going on here. But I immediately <laughs> in hearing your voice and hearing that song, I'm pretty sure you were you were it was a live performance of Still Believe. And and uh, in hearing that, I immediately started Google searching. Who who's the real guy? Who's the right. who's the real guy here? Right. Came across you. I immediately went on to my music app on my phone, and I started listening to your albums. And I have to be honest, right now, I'm in love with the first three albums: Walls of Glass metals and and the self-titled rust half and i've listened to all of those albums on repeat like for months i i i I, and wow i've gone back listening again i love those albums love it and it's touched me so deeply um we don't have to get into all of it but as you know you know just as well as anybody we're all we're all a bit broken and uh we're all going Absolutely through things. We are, brother. Yeah, we're all going through things in life, and you know, even I'm in a in a tough spot currently and stuff. And I I've been going. It's like your that those albums, especially even metals. There's so many songs on that album that is just like a beacon of light for me that that somehow centers me and brings me back to my relationship with Jesus, and and it's been amazing. So. I'll start out this interview by saying thank you so much for that, and I'm so glad wow. to have found you. Well, what a great story, man. What a great story. That that uh, that really touches me. It makes me happy. I hope so. I hope thank so. Thank you. Thank so, you. So now let's focus on you. I normally don't start these interviews out with so much talking about myself, so I want well, to focus on no, you. No, no. It's great. So talk to us. You've got an amazing voice. Um, and, and b- by the way, I've, I've watched some other interviews with you. I've seen the soft white underbelly interview. That was, that was amazing. 
I've watched some right. of your live performances. We we don't have enough time to go through your whole story. I would I would say other listeners definitely check that one out as well. It's beautiful. Um, you sharing so openly your story there. But if we want to talk about how did you get started into music, just right off the off the bat, how did how did that really first start for you? Well, I I, I was raised in a little Pentecostal church, and music was such a part of uh, our lives. It, uh, you know, it was no TV, no radio, no newspapers, no magazines, no nothing. But all we had for entertainment was mom's record collection. And my mother was a great singer. And uh, so our church services, we had church four nights a week. And um, the main focus of the services was built around music. And I, now dad preached, but what always moved me was the, was the music. And so uh, mom said I sang my first solo when I was four. I, she taught me a little song and I, she set me up on the altar and, and I sang this little song. But then my brothers, we kind of started singing together for a little bit. Uh, then two of them went to Vietnam. And for the first time, I kind of started singing outside the family. But, but um, no, music has been the thing that has always held me and sustained me and comforted me and and just lifted me up to glory when I was so sad and scared that but music always always could touch me and lift me and hold me so it, it's always done that for me and especially you said you saw the soft white underbelly interview um, throw those times when you know just darkness and pain and scared uh, but music, music could always, always get to me. And, and I felt secure in that and lyrics and, uh, and not just gospel songs, but I mean, you know, one of the songs that moved me so much, uh, when I was in treatment is that Peter Gabriel, Kate Bush, don't give up. And, um, I don't know, just that lyric of like, there's still life. There's, you know, we, you, you can make it. Just don't give up. If you give up, you're going to go down. So music has always been able to reach into my heart when whatever somebody said or some scripture or whatever, but, but music could always reach down in there and, and heal me in a lot of ways. But anyway, that's how it all started. Hey man, I don't, uh, I can say for sure you're not alone in that. And, um, it's so, it's so, I don't, I mean, I'm sure you realize it to some degree, but uh, it, it must be an amazing thing to, um, to know that you are also doing that for other people with your music. Well, I'm, I'm always humbled every time I hear that and that, you know, just sitting along with my guitar or whatever. And I write this little song and it, it, it reaches people and it touches people and it, it is a great feeling that something you did just out of your own heart expressing how you felt or a situation you were in and how it reaches beyond that and touches somebody else and you know it helps them say what they need to say but thank you very very much that that just i don't know i don't know it it, it just really touches me and blesses me and makes me very happy yeah it's good you should be happy i i want to i want to touch now on how did you trans? How 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 did we get from singing in church into all of a sudden like being on tours? And am I is this correct? Did you did you jump on with the Imperials? Was that the next step, or was there something in between there? No, uh, I had a little band in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and um, we were um, there was this movement called the Jesus Movement. And uh, there was no really contemporary Christian music anywhere. So trying to reach our high school and fellow students, we put a band together and we were taking, you know, Beatles songs and things like that, Grand Thump Railroad and rewriting lyrics to it just as an outreach to the uh, students. And um, a real revival broke out in that school and in that town. But we tried to promote a concert. Well, we did promote a concert with the uh to bring the imperials in because they were between southern gospel and what we were doing which is loud guitars and all this other kind of stuff so we promoted a concert with them 
and my little band, they let us do 20 minutes before they came on. And two years later, I'm working with an evangelist in Fort Worth, Texas, and I get a phone call from the Imperials office. And they said, would you want to come and try out uh, for the group? And, you know, at first when something like that happens, you think it's a joke. Uh, you know, and one of my friends playing a joke at me or something, but as about a couple of weeks, I drove to Nashville and, re you know, tried out with them saying with the group and they hired me that night. So, uh, that started this whole world of touring and bands and, and city to city to city and over in Europe and different parts of the world. It all started when I was 22 and, and was invited to be a part of the Imperials. That'd be a wild ride. Yeah, it was, it was, it's quite a shocker to the, to the system when, you know, the largest crowd I ever sang to was maybe 200 people. And all of a sudden you're in front of thousands. It was uh, quite a transition, quite a transition. It's really, really pretty amazing. So how then did you move from that touring with this already established uh, Christian band and then into the first solo album, Walls of Glass. Is that correct? 1983, that was the first solo album? Yeah, yeah. Walls of, Walls of Glass was my very first solo record. But I had always wanted to make my own records, make my own music, and, uh, you know, from beginning to end, to write songs and, and, and get into the studio and build that little song with, an acoustic guitar and a click track, uh, and then begin to layer it with uh, instruments and things like that. And then they would put this incredible band together and they'd take the demo and make this thing a monster. Uh, and then to be able to go through that phase and then the mixing at the end, uh, to be able to go through that whole process. Because with the Imperials, I would do a... Um, they would cut the tracks, whoever the producer was, Michael Lamartin or Chris Christian or Brown Bannister. And then the Imperials, we would, we would come and we'd spend a week just singing vocals. And then we'd leave again and go back out on tour. So there was just this void of, I really want to see the whole process. And, um, and there was like no more advancement with the Imperials. They, um, I was a, a salaried singer and, um, all of a sudden I'm singing more and more solos and, uh, but in order to grow musically and to stretch my wings vocally and everything else, it was, it was time. Then what was, I'm, I'm really interested in knowing, um, what was it like then going into your solo career? Like, is it studio musicians? Did you know some guys that came in? Um, were you writing these songs? How did, how did that happen? Well, me and my wife have, have written and we wrote songs for the Imperials. And um, I wrote, uh, she and I wrote some songs on the, the first solo record. Um, but no, writing has always been a part of my life. And with the, all of my records, there have been, um, you know, songs that we've written. And with making records, it's, I've cut other people's material also, because I've always been the kind of writer that the best song wins. And if somebody else's song is better than mine, then, you know, I always go with the best songs, and it makes a stronger project, uh, a stronger record. But uh, no, uh, uh, writing has just always been a part of this whole thing. Now, I, I talked about my my absolute favorites, those first three albums, and then you really had a switch there to more of kind of like a, what felt like a, like a pop country kind of feel. What, what Was there anything that prompted that, or was that just like winds of change? or Because um, it also seems like throughout the 90s, that was your album's kind of a very different feel than those first three. And if I'm honest, when I look at these interviews – I think a lot of your audience, that was their bread. Like that's where they fell in love with you. Yeah. And, but see, as an artist, you morph, you change, uh, you know, you experience some different things musically and, and there's just places that you feel like I've got to go in another direction. Maybe the songs that I'm writing, but those kind of changes have been important for me. Uh, as an artist to grow, to, uh, to not get stuck. 
And it's like, you know, my Christmas records, they're all jazz. And I love jazz. Uh, but on Christmas records, I was able to do three jazz records, which I love. And then there's uh, the Winds of Change record that focused, you know, a lot on country music. And, and The Way Home, which is, a, a, you know, a kind of acoustic driven record. But, but all of it is a journey. You know, I, I, I've never been put in a box and just kept there. Uh, the great thing about my career is fans have followed me in every direction that I go and they still buy my, buy my uh, CDs. They still support me. And uh, just, there's been a core of people that have followed me and allowed me to experiment musically and try new things musically. That way it doesn't get old to me. That's, that's really awesome. That's lovely. Really, really nice experience for you, for sure, to be able to have that freedom. Now, you've been making albums for, I mean, several decades now. Yeah. What, what struggles? Have you run into any struggles that you think are even, um, like, either just part of making music all that time or even just being a Christian artist and trying to change and, and you know, be yourself through all that? Oh, absolutely. You know, there, there have been times of just... Uh, you know, dealing with the heart of me and yeah, you become and you're following Jesus, but there's still trauma from your childhood that has not been dealt with and pain and disappointments and insecurity. And you're trying to deal with all of that while riding the bus around the country. And it's hard uh, because eventually it all starts coming out. You know, you maybe try to keep a cup in a bottle with a cork on it, but eventually it comes out. And, uh, and it can be very destructive, but God had always brought people into my life that would help me, you know, through my own addiction and, you know, trying to quiet those voices of you're not worth anything. You'll never be worth anything. And, uh, no matter what you do, it will never be good enough. And that plagued me. It just plagued me. But every turn in my life, every turn there has been people that have come to my life to help me with, with, uh, but the thing that I've been, I, I'm teachable, you know, I, I don't know everything. And, and there's always been people around me that I listen to because I don't know everything. I'm very limited with what I do know, but you know, it, it, it if we listen and we're open and we're willing to work and do hard work, uh, you begin to change and you start turning into that person that you always wanted to be. That's honest and real and sincere and anointed. Uh, but it's a job and you can't just never coast. You never can coast. You're either going forwards or backwards constantly and you never arrive. So, you know, there's just like daily checks for me, uh, you know, am I moving forward? Is there some place in my life that needs work? Is there something in my life that, three months down from that, you know, is going to, going to prick my side. Uh, but you monitor constantly monitor and pray. Uh, and then all of a sudden you start liking yourself and you start liking what you're doing a lot. And, uh, you start really enjoying everything because those temptations are not going to knock you off your feet every time you feel them. And when you start changing, it's addictive. Man, when you start feeling forgiveness, it's addictive. And uh, it keeps pulling you forward. It keeps pulling you forward to where, man, I, where I am today is such a far cry from where I was when I started. But, uh, I mean, you know, I like me. I like me. And I like hanging out with me, you know. And I, I think I could be my own best friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, and it's turned me into a grand husband and, and a great father, you know, just turning into Christ's image and, and being able to be challenged by him to change. And uh, I, I wrote a song uh, on, my very, on that Walt Glass record, it, it was kind of like a prophecy of what I was heading into and not even knowing it, but it says, Lord, you know my past, like clay, the pains of life have molded me. The years have brought so many things from examples I, can't, I can see. Some good, some bad, they're all a part of me. But I see myself with selfish motives and my inconsistencies. 
and block upon block the wall was built complete. Oh, please come and tear this wall down and show this captive heart how, be, how to be free. The second verse is teach me to forgive, letting go of hurts I hide behind, facing all the things in me that I've carried deep inside as your healing love brings all of them to life. Let my life be an example of what true life can be when it's given like a gift to those who need. Oh, please come and take control of this yielded, willing soul and live through me. I want to be like you. I want to change. And not knowing I was talking about the road ahead of me. And I often go back to that song. It's like, my Lord, I wrote that before, before I saw what was going to happen or felt like what was going to happen and talking about it and just kind of dropped in my heart before at the early part of my career, it was like, I need help. I, I need to change uh, and not be trapped in this pattern my life has set for me. But I keep saying this over and over and over again, but it, it's work. It's hard work uh, to begin to turn into the person that you want to be. Mm. Hey man, Russ, I got to tell you, um, I was listening to that song on my way over here. I was listening to it on the were way really? over here, Russ. <laughs> Holy that Spirit song you at were work. That all the way to do the interview? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Holy wow. Spirit at work right now. Wow. That's the truth. Oh, man. So, uh, <laughs> all right. You touched on it a little bit. Um, you've had a lot of struggles in your life. It, it, there's been ones that have been forced upon you and there's ones that you've put yourself in that position. And um, first I want to say, I just, I just love and admire how, how vulnerable you are about so many things about your life, your journey. Um, Even uh, I I know there's been a lot of comments about it, but uh, the way you've talked about the church and, and, and those sorts of things, uh, I just really appreciate that. But if there is anything can you name a, a good piece of advice that you would give to uh, to sort of the youth today, you know, that are just in many ways lost, but sometimes don't even know it? I mean, we all are in different times, but the the youth today, sure. they've got so much stuff competing for their attention and, and their spirit. Is there anything you can say to the youth today? Well, you know, one thing that I would say is you never take yourself too seriously. And to realize, especially when you're young, that life will cut your legs out from underneath you, that life will throw you all kind of turns and hurts and, and victories and everything else. But you hang on to what you know is real. Hang on to your faith. Hang on to what you believe. And um, But there have been times in my life that I would get my feelings hurt or whatever, and I'd back away and... And, but the Holy Spirit would just kind of pull me back in again, but, but don't grow up too fast, you know, allow yourself time to take everything in and learn from everything and, and enjoy the process, man, I pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And it took me so long to begin to enjoy what I was doing. Um, but I don't know, you know, for young people to, to, um, to allow yourself to feel and care and love and admit your mistakes very quickly. And you're not going to do it right all the time. And you're going to make mistakes, but you always get back up. Just get back up. Just get back up. A lot of people fall down and they never give up to get up again. But what I've learned through my life and the hard blows that's been dealt to me is that you get back up. Uh, even bleeding, you just get back up and keep walking. Uh, and that's when great things happen. But the danger is, is that because of whatever, you know, insecurity, fear, hurt, feeling, whatever, is that we roll over and, and feel sorry for ourselves. And, and how could they do that to me? And, yeah, da, da. and we miss the miracle that could happen if we just stand back up and try to take another step. But that's when the miracles happen. So I don't know. There's, there's several things in there is just enjoy, take your time, enjoy. God's got your life in control. He's, he, he's controlling it. And no matter what happens ahead of you, he's directing it. You know, I wish I could have just relaxed into that, but he is leading, he is guiding. And no matter how hard I push, I can't push a door open, but I watched him 
place after place after place open doors. But as I look back, I wish I had just relaxed and enjoyed the process. But anyway, those are just a couple of things. Mm. No, I think it's it's wonderful. So are you uh, are you pretty active in in a church nowadays or? Well, yeah, yeah. There there is a church that I love that I go to when I can. Uh, but it's in Nashville. I live in a town called Bell Buckle, Tennessee. That's uh, 45 minutes outside of Nashville. So, uh, but oh, I, I love the preacher there, and I love to go when uh, she's preaching and be a part of the service. But it's hard sometimes when you're traveling, and and um, uh, but I, I'm as consistent as I can be when it comes to going to church. I know uh, in watching that that other interview referenced, um, you talked at one point about being taken in by a family, and uh, they were involved with a Methodist church. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. It seems like you kind of felt this way, but um, for me, even as a non-believer, that is really interesting. Uh, where we're at today is a, is a Methodist church, and that's... That is exactly what won me over <laughs> after all so much yeah. um, questioning. Right, right. There's just times you need something solid and and uh, traditional. You know, being raised Pentecostal, I was just all over the place. And I remember going to that Methodist church with Mama June and, and uh, Daddy Bud and Stuart and Kim and that consistent, uh, it was a lot of motion, but it it was soft and it was real. When at a time I didn't need emotion, I needed something concrete <clears throat> that wouldn't fluctuate. And uh, and to this day, right now I go to Episcopalian Church. Uh, I've never been around the Book of Common Prayers and and High Church and the the reverence of reading the Scripture and. That's kind of where I am today. Is that Nick could change, you know, months from now? But right now, uh, that seems to be where where I need to be. That's wonderful. So, what are you working on now? You have a new album happening. Talk to us about that. Yeah, it, it's a uh, um, a new record that uh, we completed a couple of months ago. It's coming out in January, and I'm doing it with a legend a legend in contemporary Christian music. His name is Steve Taylor, and he has influenced the whole generation with music and writing and performing. He's just one of the best of the best. And um, we kind of hooked up together and um, and got a vision for uh, this record and what it could be. And uh, a guy called Troy came into the mix and John Painter, and we began to pick songs and uh but it's the most unique record i've ever made and it kind of goes back to the 80s in the sense of like doing stuff that hadn't been done before um but this record i mean it's like it's got a duran duran song and and depeche mode and the nationals and prince uh you two and so um but it's an incredible incredible record and i am so happy with this Again, it's just one of the best things I've done in my whole career. So I, I'm just thrilled. And it's coming out in January, but the name of the record is called Cover Stories because we do a lot of covers on this record from songs that have moved all of us. But uh, it's funny because you mentioned Mama June, and I'm just leaving there with my brother, and we're and we're headed back home to Nashville. But um, uh, And we're doing a big listening party this uh Saturday night with friends and fans that are coming together to listen, to listen for the first time to the whole project. Uh, and, uh, and then the record's coming out in January and, uh, but a lot of good things are going to happen. And this record is going to get a whole lot of attention, uh, just for its uniqueness and the power of it and the tracks and everything else. It's really going to turn heads. It really, really is. And I'm so thrilled. Sounds awesome. I wish I could be there for this listening party. <laughs> now, me too, man. Well, it's Saturday. Hop on a train and come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> hey, uh, Russ, this is the other guy. I've been kind of standing back, the, letting Justin take guy. over here. Yeah. <laughs> 
Go ahead. I just wanted to, I wanted to ask you a bit about um, Russ and Tori's Bell Buckle Weekend that's coming up that first weekend in November. Yep. That sounds like uh, quite the blowout there. Yeah. Well, it is. And we've been doing it nine years. And we've had guest artists like um, Kevin, um, 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 she, uh, Michael Tate, and Bart Miller, and Bill Gaither, and uh, just different ones. But uh, Saturday night, March, November the 2nd, is a whole blowout concert with the band. A lot of the stuff from the 80s and 90s, uh, you know, songs like I Still Believe and, and, and Higher and Rock Solid, those things we do. And then Sunday is a little more traditional uh, with the people because I've, you know, been able to, fortunate enough to kind of be in both worlds. And uh, so that weekend is just people come from all over the country for two days and it's just great food, great music. And, and people have time to talk with Tori and I, and, you know, talk to us, get autographs or whatever, but it is an incredible time. And the food that we cater is stunning. I mean, just stunning. So, so uh, there's always uh, a t- tickets available for people that hear this and want to come. But I tell you, it, it is a, incredible wonderful powerful weekend the first november 2nd and 3rd excellent yeah it's great that you're keeping busy here and again we really appreciate your time ross is there anything else maybe in the works or something we should be watching out for well no it's just that record coming out in january and hopefully you guys will hear some stuff and want to play it on your on your uh, uh on your podcast uh uh or what you guys do there so give it a listen and and take a shot at playing some yeah, for sure. I can't wait. I can't wait to listen to it. I'm very excited. <laughs> Russ, thank you so much. Um, I can't say enough how much you've impacted my life, uh, even in this short period of time. Um, I wish you all the best. I love you. I can't wait to hear you again. Well, I'm honored that I impacted your life and that my music impacted your life. Thank you for telling me that. You're welcome, Russ. Thank you again for your time. You have a great story, and it's been great speaking with you. Thank you again. Well, guys, thank you for your encouragement. I appreciate it so much. It's our pleasure. Thank you so much, Russ. Have a good one, brother. All right, guys. You too. Bye-bye. And again, that was Russ Taff, three-time Gospel Music Hall of Famer. And look for his latest album, Cover Story, coming soon.